This is the Fantasy Ladder Podcast, episode 41. I'm your host, Steve, at Fantasy Ladder. This podcast is brought to you by the IDP Guys uh, channel and uh, podcast network. So welcome back once again, my fantasy football friends and family. Let's climb the ladder of fantasy football together. So this is a, one of the more unique shows I've ever done. Uh, we are not back at the house. We are actually in a hotel lobby in Florida. I was celebrating uh, Christmas in Florida. So this is going to be kind of interesting. I'm literally staring at um, two elevator doors. So I'm probably I'm going to be getting a lot of strange looks, but I don't care. We'll keep a little tally going here. But um, in the meantime, i uh, going to be gearing you up for week 17 of NFL action going through the, the final week of the fantasy football season. Of course, this is championship week for, uh, for, for many of us. So going to go through every game of the slate, going through my trust, if you must and bust system for every matchup, and then going through some listener start sick questions, which we will actually will begin with. But uh, definitely a lot to talk about as far as NFL news goes, um, and that'll be incorporated uh, into the teams uh, where appropriate and where applicable during those matchups or just kind of naturally as they come up. But uh, definitely a lot of big news, a lot of uh, irritating news uh, for uh, fantasy football purposes, but it's just one of these things that we have to deal with. So, uh, yeah, so let's just get started uh, with some of the listener start sick questions. <clears throat> Uh, coming in from at Harding underscore three, of course, a friend of the podcast, the Axe Man himself. He asks in a half PPR league, he has two questions. Half PPR league, uh, looking at Jamal Williams against the Bears, Tyler Lockett against the New York Jets, Zay Jones against the Houston Texans, and Deontay Johnson against the Baltimore Ravens. All right, Axton, in this one, I'm going to just stick with uh, Deontay Johnson, just kind of stick with that really solid... Um, target floor that he presents uh obviously we're not counting on him scoring a touchdown uh, he still has not uh, up to this point um but give me the uh targets uh going to uh Deontay against the ravens now i will say that tyler lockett will come in as a solid number two for me amongst these options uh it is a tougher matchup against the new york jets as i'm sure you're well aware uh but he is questionable he he may not even play but Basically, if Lockett is active, it's going to be hard for me to not start him over guys like Jamal Williams or Zay Jones this week. So uh, Deontay would be the priority. Then Tyler Lockett would come in as the alternate if he is able to suit up. Then the second question, same format, uh, Leonard Fournette against the Carolina Panthers, Zay Jones once again against the Texans, Deontay Johnson once again against the Ravens, Romeo Dubes against the Vikings, and Jeff Wilson against New England. Uh, and he, he did have a little bit of a vomit uh, emoji in, in the question on Twitter. Um and I would agree. It is kind of a yucky one. I, I don't really like playing a lot of players against New England if I can help it. <clears throat> Uh, especially Jeff Wilson, who just has been a little bit up and down in his days here with Miami. So I'm just going to disregard him real fast, um, continue to uh, not prioritize uh, Zay Jones, despite the uh, targets you do like that. But there just seems to be a lot of mouths to feed there in the Jacksonville offense. Um, so we'll kind of put him down as well. Romeo Dubes is interesting here, uh, especially if Christian Watson can't go. Um but he would be the third priority of this group um, if Christian Watson can't go. So I am actually going to be prioritizing here Leonard Fournette. He would be he would be my number one over Deontay Johnson, who would be my number two. So that would be the priority order. Leonard Fournette against the Panthers, then Deontay Johnson against the Ravens. Uh, so best of luck to you, Axton. Uh, good luck in your championship. <clears throat> Next question is coming from at Jamie underscore FF addict. He asks a DST question and a tight end question. We will start with the DSTs. He asks uh, for a, a uh, defensive streamer uh, looking at the Los Angeles Chargers against the Los Angeles Rams or the Dallas Cowboys against the Tennessee Titans. So for this one, I'm absolutely going with uh, Dallas here. Was a very solid defense all season long. Has been uh, allowing a lot of points uh, as of late, but still uh, turning the ball over, still uh, still getting pressure on quarterbacks and such. So uh, give me 
Dallas against the uh, Titans on the Thursday night game, likely without Derrick Henry and Ryan Tannehill and Trey Lumberg. So it's just a lot of like yuck there on the Titans side of the ball. Absolutely give me Dallas there, buddy. And then uh, as far as the tight ends go, a very interesting question. He asks uh, Taysom Hill against the Philadelphia Eagles, Pat Firemuth against the Baltimore Ravens, or Tyler Higby against the Chargers. Uh, my priority here will be Friermuth, then Higby, then Hill. I think Taysom Hill can be sneaky uh, usage-wise, uh, just, just like he has been last couple weeks, especially against the Browns. Um, I think he could definitely be incorporated a decent bit um, against the Eagles. However, give me Pat Friermuth and just a very steady uh, target volume he gets in that in that Steelers offense. Again, not necessarily counting on a touchdown from him, but definitely more steady of an option compared to Higby, who has scored touchdowns in the last two weeks, but uh, don't want to be relying on the up and down uh, nature of Baker Mayfield. Um, even though this could be an interesting uh, game here uh, to get volume against the Chargers, I just would prefer the, to uh, my opinion, the the safer uh, Pat Firemuth is who I voted for in your poll. So um, best of luck, Jamie. Uh, this is your fifth time in the championship, but you're going for your fourth title. So best of luck to you, of course. And we got at Brandon underscore Kaiser one, of course, one of the fellow OG barbarians. Uh, we are looking uh, at, at a DST question and a half PPR question here. Uh, I'll start with the DST. So DST, he asks the Kansas City Chiefs against the Broncos, the Chargers against the Rams or the Ravens against the Steelers. So uh, three very strong options, obviously, uh, in this one. However, I'm going to be going with the Chiefs against the Broncos. Uh, Broncos, of course, did fire their head coach, uh, Nathaniel Hackett, who could not last through his first season hired as head coach. Uh, you hate to see that for him as a person, but it was definitely something had to change there. Uh, we've been talking about this all season long, just an absolute... Um, crap show there in in denver but yeah so so give me the the very solid chiefs dst against uh the broncos just the the broncos who are in shambles right now obviously the chargers are solid against the rams even though they exploded against the broncos last week um baker mayfield is very up and down obviously has very um just kind of like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, you really don't know what you're going to get out of him or, or that offense week in and week out. And obviously the Chargers have a lot of uh, defensive talent and the Ravens have just been really solid all year long. Um, and these games, you know, Ravens and Steelers, they are always are nasty. They're always like dog fights, you know, just going back like 20 years. They just are never easy games, but give me the chiefs against the Broncos. That just seems to be the uh, safest bet uh, amongst these three. Uh, matchup so best of luck there brandon then his uh, offensive player question asking about garrett wilson against the seahawks with mike white starting at at the quarterback position for the jets jk dobbins of course uh, against the pittsburgh steelers and then jerry judy against the chiefs so kind of count counterintuitive what i just said in the last question i'm going with the chiefs on the defensive uh, start, but then give me Jerry Judy against the Chiefs, uh, just because it is potential to be a uh, pass catching uh, volume uh, situation here, uh, just like what happened last week uh, with Judy amongst uh, the, the same three. But uh, Dobbins would be my lowest priority just because. Um, Gus Edwards was coming on a little bit more than I was hoping for uh, as far as usage goes. Uh, so unless Dobbins is getting a touchdown with the kind of usage that uh, Edwards is getting, it's just going to be kind of a floor uh, looking uh uh, outcome, despite uh, the very high uh, yards per carry and production the uh, two previous weeks. Um, but if, again, if the Ravens are already guaranteed a playoff spot, there's no need to overload him. Uh, so I can kind of disregard him. Garrett Wilson, however, is very, very intriguing against Seattle with um, Mike White back. Uh, the one uh, Seattle corner is really, really tough. So hopefully he's not matched up there. But with Mike White, just kind of opens up everything else, uh, unlike with, with Zach Wilson, who just has now been officially been benched for the, for the remainder of the season. Um, so 
Jerry Judy would be my top priority, then Garrett Wilson would come in as a second priority in your championship. So best of luck, Brandon. We got at a question from at Rob underscore 31. He asks in a PPR league, JK Dobbins against the Steelers or Josh Jacobs against the very tough San Francisco 49ers. Josh Jacobs on the Raiders, of course, who are going to be without Derek Carr. Uh, the uh, team had decided to just send him home for the remainder of the season, uh, which is actually a pretty shocking uh, situation. I, I don't know if I've ever seen that kind of thing occur, even with a team who is officially out of the playoffs. It just seems very bizarre uh, what the future holds there for Derek Carr in the uh, Raiders organization after after something like this. But uh, Josh Jacobs, to me, just presents a lot more ceiling and volume potential against the 49ers. However, uh, keep your eye on, see if, if, if any other players just are not going to be active in this one. And it, obviously, it's a very tough matchup, but um, if he's active, I would feel well more comfortable having him in even with uh, even without Derek Carr than with uh, J.K. Dobbins in uh, just as a floor standpoint on Dobbins. Jacobs would just be more in line to get more touches. But again, it could just be one of these odd situations where just more um, veterans just don't end up playing. It just, it just might be like we want to take more of a look at like Amir Abdullah might get white, might want to get uh, a better look at Zabir White. So definitely want to keep your eyeball on that situation still uh, leading up to Sunday. So again, Josh Jacobs would be the pick, but not horrible with J.K. Dobbins as well. Another question uh, from at Will Banks, capital R, capital S. He asked the DST question. I love these, uh, especially in uh, in these championship weeks. There's so much on the line, but I, I do enjoy these a, a good deal. He asked Dallas at the Titans, Chiefs at Chiefs at uh, Denver, New York Giants at the or against the Colts, and then the Chargers against the Rams. So, uh, so um, a pretty consistent theme here with the uh, teams in question. Still, Dallas would be my top priority. The Chiefs, in this case, would be my second priority. And then Giants against the Colts and then Chargers. So again, all four really solid options. Just would prefer Dallas and then Chiefs and then Giants here. And then uh, he asks uh, a, an offensive player question. Uh, 0 0.5 PPR. Jerry Judy against the Chiefs, Jahan Dotson against uh, the Cleveland Browns, or Christian Watson against the Minnesota Vikings. My priority list here would be Judy number one against the Chiefs, just trying to stay consistent here. Uh, Christian Watson number two against the Minnesota Vikings if he's if he's active. And then Jahan Dotson would come in as the third priority here against the Cleveland Browns. Uh, just Carson Wentz coming back uh, as the starter here in the uh, commander's offense. Uh, love Dotson as a player, as a talent. Uh, however, there's a little bit more uh, mouths to feed there in that offense. Um, but Judy would be the priority. Watson would be the second. Then Dotson would be third. All solid, but that would be the priority for me in a half PPR. So best of luck to you. Good, sir. Final question uh, comes from at Triathlete Chef, and this is a multi-part question. So uh, always love these uh, from your buddy. So uh, best of luck here. Uh, we got two DST questions. Uh, we'll kind of run through those quickly here. Uh, in one league, he's looking to start the Kansas City Chiefs once again against the Broncos, the New York Giants against the Indianapolis Colts, Chargers against the Rams, and then the Commanders against the Browns. So my priorities here, just like with the other questions, would start here, in this case, with the Chiefs, then the Giants, then the Chargers. Commanders are interesting here against the Browns, uh, but give me the Chiefs and Giants ahead uh, by a good amount, but top priority with this would be the Chiefs. Second DST question uh, is asking once again about the Chiefs. Also the Bucks uh, against Carolina, Jacksonville against Houston, and then the Giants once again against the Colts. Same order here would still be Chiefs, then Giants. Um, then it would be, uh, I think, Jacksonville and then the Bucks. So all four very solid options there, but still I would be leaning uh, the Chiefs and then the Giants in both of these uh, situations. He has a general question. Uh, I kind of touched on this a little bit. Oh no, I didn't actually. I, I kind of touched on the on, on the Raiders' offense, but he basically is asking: Is Devontae Adams a start without Derek Carr? 
my short answer is yes. Uh, I I would be really hard pressed to not start one of the best wide receivers in the league in my uh, fantasy championship, despite uh, the last two weeks being unbelievably disappointing. Um, it is Jared Stidham. So a massive downgrade from Derek Carr. So I think it's a very fair question, but my short answer is no. Oh, sorry. No, as in I'm not benching him. However, is he a start without Carr? To answer the question, yes, unless strong options are behind him. So if you have if you have a bunch of guys who are like kind of borderline um, flex plays, I, I may consider them uh, just depending, obviously. But I think overall he is a start, but definitely depending on what your options are. So um, if you have other options to, to throw at me, obviously, you, you know, I, I, I respond pretty quickly on Twitter. Uh, at Fantasy Ladder, just don't hesitate to uh, ask about that. But a very tricky situation, uh, really just a brutal situation for, for fantasy, obviously. Um, but great question. Uh, be very curious to see how, how it plays out. Then he asks a couple of offensive player questions. First group of players is in a PPR league. So he's asking about Kenneth Walker, uh, David Montgomery, Dante Foreman, and Rashad White. So... We got Kenneth Walker against the Jets, David Montgomery against the Lions, uh, Dante Foreman against the Buccaneers, and then Rashad White against the Panthers. So my order of priority here in a PPR would would be Kenneth Walker, David Montgomery, Rashad White, and then Dante Foreman. Devont, uh, uh, da- Dante Foreman would only be last priority for me, just with how uh, Chuba Hubbard has been coming on the last few weeks. Obviously, Foreman definitely has a high ceiling, as we saw last week against the Lions. Uh, but that is part of the reason why I really still like David Montgomery. But Kenneth Walker overall would be the top. He just has the best ceiling amongst all three of these guys, uh, week in and week out. <clears throat> Uh, despite the uh, tougher matchup, I would not hesitate to start him if he is active. So he is currently questionable. Keep an eye on that. Um, so Walker, Montgomery, Rashad White, then Foreman. Half PPR, he asks, uh, once again, Kenneth Walker, J.K. Dobbins, Rashad White, and George Pickens. So in this one, the priority would be Walker, Rashad White, Pickens, and then Dobbins for me. So Best of luck to you. Best of luck to everyone. Thank you for asking. Thank you for uh, picking my brain on, on some of these questions. I uh, it, it really is an honor to to uh, you know help you guys out, or at least try to help uh, dispense my thoughts on 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 the matter uh, at hand. So best of luck with everyone. And then again, I, I am just uh, extremely flattered you ask, and hopefully I can be helpful uh, to you. Obviously, at this juncture of the season where it all matters here in the championship week. So uh, once again, best of luck and, and thank you. The show would not be possible uh, without you guys. So uh, that's awesome. Appreciate you asking and really hope, hope, hope you guys do well this week. Okay. So we are going to plow through the games of uh, week 17 here. Just wanted to touch on the uh, trust. If you must and bust system, just real quick. Um, so trust is basically a player you're going to be starting regardless of the format, uh, pretty much a matchup proof type of player. And if you must has a little bit of nuance to it. So um, if you must can kind of borderline between starting and benching, depending on the league type and the roster depth. So if it's an if you must for a more shallow league where, where you only have one flex play, more shallow benches, then I'll be leaning more towards um, a sit or a bench. If you have a deeper league where there's multiple flex spots and a very deep bench, then this is more of a start as an if you must. Then busts for the week are basically players you're still fine to have on your roster, but don't necessarily want to get into your starting lineup. Again, a lot of these guys are fine to add, you know, so sometimes as, as a defensive measure. Uh, so your opponent doesn't get the the um, access to to uh, to them in, in their own lineup. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of uh, a lot of strategy there. Uh, but these players just 
ultimately just not ready to get into starting lineups, uh, especially <laughs> for a week as critical as uh, week 17, where many championships are going to be uh, decided. Okay. So we're going to start with the Island games, Thursday night, Sunday night, Monday night football, then plow through the Sunday early slate and then the Sunday later slate. So kicking the week off in kind of a funky one. we got the Dallas Cowboys at the Tennessee Titans. Uh, this game's over under is set at 39 and a half as of Wednesday night uh, with Dallas being favored negative 12. So they are... Um, pretty substantial road favorites here against the Titans who, as I mentioned earlier, very likely to be without Derrick Henry, very likely to be without Ryan Tannehill. So because of that, um, I really don't want to start any Titans if I can help it. Um, I think a world, (laughs) I think a world exists where if um, you're desperate and you need a solid tight end play, I think you can look at Chig Akwonu. Other than that, I don't want to start any Titans player in this game. On the Dallas side of the ball, including the DST, which I already had mentioned uh, several times here, I basically want to start all my Cowboys. So Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, Tony Pollard, if he's active. So keep an eye on that. Uh, C.D. Lamb, obviously, Dalton Schultz. Uh, for sure. Um, any of the receivers behind CD Lamb are a little bit dicey. So um, Michael Gallup could get some work in here. Just are, I'm so, am not as confident at the overall scope of the position. So Michael Gallup would come in as an if you must for sure, where the rest are definitely strong trust options for me. So moving on to Sunday night football, got the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Baltimore Ravens. Baltimore is favored uh, at minus two and a half with a 35 points over under. So it could be fairly low scoring in this one. At least that's what is being predict- predicted uh, by Vegas. So um, on the Ravens side of the ball, a lot of if you must kind of caliber players here, um, I think Tyler. Tyler Huntley would come in as, as a super flex play um, if he's healthy. And then uh, Lamar Jackson, of course, may still be active for this one. I personally wouldn't count on it, uh, but if he is active, it's basically hard to not get him in your lineup. So just keep your eye on that. But definitely Lamar, if he's active, I'm starting him. Uh, as far as the running backs go, J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards would both come in as a deeper league uh, flex plays. Uh, definitely startable, you know, for sure. Just don't have a, a, a ton of confidence as far as a ceiling is concerned there. Um, I don't want to start any of the wide receivers if I could help it. And then um, Mark Andrews, of course, is a trust just because of the nature of the tight end position despite some of the struggles as of late on the Pittsburgh Steelers side of the ball, uh, a lot of intriguing um, options here, despite the tough matchup, but still going to feel mostly confident with Najee Harris, Deontay Johnson, and Pat Fryermuth. Kenny Pickett would come in as a super flex play, kind of a back end, like borderline super flex play. So you don't really love it uh, against the Ravens. And then uh, George Pickens would come in as an, if you must deeper flex play. Then we got Monday night football, which is absolutely the game of the week. Cannot wait for this one. So much is going to be on the line here for real playoff or for real NFL playoff um, standings and uh, as well as for fantasy football purposes. So <laughs> we got the Buffalo Bills at the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, Buffalo Bills are uh, negative one uh, favorites uh, on the road and with a 49 and a half point over under, I believe that is the second highest of the week, only behind the Chicago Bears at the Detroit Lions, which we will get to in a bit. But the uh, Buffalo Bills side of the ball, definitely Josh Allen, definitely Stefan Diggs, trustworthy players. A lot of the other players in that offense are going to be coming in as if you must. Uh, we're talking about Dawson Knox. We're talking about uh, Gabriel Davis, Devin Singletary, and James Cook. Cincinnati Bengals side of the ball, definitely want to be starting all your Bengals here, especially Joe Burrow, T. Higgins, Jamar Chase. Keep an eye on 
Hayden Hurst. He is currently questionable, has not played in about a month. So um, you might not want to wait it out until Monday night to see if you want to start him. So I would have a backup plan if you are planning on Hayden Hurst. Uh, and then, of course, Joe Mixon, I believe you can trust here more than if you must, just because it's the Bills. Um, but basically, if Mixon is active, I'm starting him. Um, kind of hard not to, right? So definitely feel very confident in a lot of the Bengals. And then uh, as well as Tyler Boyd, he would come in as more of an if you must, in a uh, especially in a deeper league uh, flex play situation. Just not getting as much volume with now Jamar Chase back. Um, a lot of the other kind of ancillary guys are, are stepping up a little bit more like uh, the one uh, wide receiver, Irwin. He's He's been getting a lot of love. So it's kind of frustrating uh, if you are, uh, if you have Tyler uh, Boyd rostered, but either way, you know, can't dictate who uh, Joe Burrow is throwing the ball to, but we just want to make sure um you know, of course, Boyd is uh, fully healthy as well. He's kind of had some issues with with, with with a finger injury, so kind of a frustrating one, but should be high scoring. You want the pass catchers in the game. So, yeah, that that's basically is where I'm going to be thinking with uh, Tyler Boyd. More of an if you must. Okay. I'm going to go through the Sunday early slate games, and there's a good chunk here. Uh, the later slate only has four, so a pretty typical um, Sunday slate uh, as far as what we've seen uh, throughout the course of the season. Kick things off with the New Orleans Saints at the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, Eagles are home favorites, negative six, with a 44 point over under. So should be pretty good scoring you know, as far as uh, Vegas is concerned here. I'll start with the Saints, just not as um, much exciting options as far as I'm concerned. It's Andy Dalton, so definitely want to always kind of mon monitor your expectations there. He would barely come in as a super flex option. Alvin Kamara is a trust as long as he is active and as, as long as he is healthy. As far as the wide receivers go, I believe we'll get Chris Olave back. Uh, so he is currently questionable, but if he's active, he would come in as a borderline trust if you must. Uh, as far as the tight ends are concerned, uh, Juwan Johnson is kind of a desperation uh, tight end streamer um, as you know, uh, a lot of the tight ends have just been kind of gross this year, just a little bit up and down, little tight end, uh, or sorry, a touchdown dependent. Um, then Taysom Hill, the, the the other tight end there, obviously, who just does it all, you know, to get snap uh, snaps as a running back, snap as a quarterback, and obviously can still catch passes in the tight end spot. Um, so he may, he, he, he's been getting sneaky usage here the last uh, month or so. Uh, so I think that that should continue here against the Eagles. Um, so yeah, don't really feel great about trotting him out, but definitely as an, if you must uh, tight end, I, 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 I'd be okay with that. Then we're looking at the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, of course, uh, still unsure if uh, Jalen Hurts is going to be active, if he's going to be ready to go. If he is ready to go, you are absolutely trusting him and he just will continue to raise the entire offense up, even though Gardner Minshew did a fantastic job. If he is the starter, I believe he can be utilized as a super flex play. Uh, as far as the running backs go, Miles Sanders, as long as he is active, you're starting him, of course. And then with the wide receivers, A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith, and then Dallas Goddard is back. Uh, he actually did uh, very decent in his first week back against the Cowboys, so you can continue to trust the big three pass catchers there. Moving on to the Arizona Cardinals at the Atlanta Falcons, 42 point over under with the Falcons favored negative three and a half. So the Cardinals, uh, currently James Conner is questionable. So if he's active, uh, you can definitely trust him against the Falcons. Uh, the quarterback position, uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be Colt McCoy or Trace McSorley. Um, I don't want to start either one, <laughs> if I can help it, uh, even as a super flex play. Um, so once again, it will just kind of continue to lower the ceiling for DeAndre Hopkins and Marquise Brown. Seemed like Greg Dortch was definitely the uh, benefactor there for uh, Trace McSorley. Don't want to be counted on him in, in any championships, however. Um, so, you know, depending on who the, well, 
I think either way, uh, whoever the quarterback is, I think you could still um, start Marquise Brown and DeAndre Hopkins, but with tempered expectations. Very annoying situation, uh, just like with 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 the Raiders uh, and Derek Carr and, and and everything else. But just one of these things. This is what we have to do and and adjust. So um, it wasn't for a lack of targets uh, that uh, Hopkins what was uh, seen on Sunday Night Football just wasn't connecting, or, or just a lot of the targets were just really not in his general direction from McSorley. So it's a very frustrating one, but hard to not start guys who who got you here, you know. Um, on the Atlanta Falcons side of the ball, uh, Desmond Ritter is um, barely a super flex play. Would not really want to trust him uh, per se. Uh, Drake London would come in as an if you must wide receiver option. And uh, Tyler Algier is an if you must running back option. So he has been really hot uh, as of late. He's got a lot of usage, highly productive, and then in a really great spot here against the Cardinals uh, to show out. So. <laughs> So if you're able to, I think uh, it would be wise to try to find a way to get Tyler Algier into your lineups. Then we got the big one, uh, the Chicago Bears at the Detroit Lions. Big one as in the point over under uh, prediction here from Vegas. I got 52 point over under. Uh, so in Detroit, the Lions are favored at negative six. So uh, definitely expect a lot of high scoring basically meaning start Justin Fields. Uh, if you got him as a quarterback, start David Montgomery, start Cole Komet more as an if you must tight end option. On the Lions side of the ball, definitely start Jared Goff, definitely start um, Amon Ross St. Brown. As far as the running backs are concerned, uh, things have not been as hunky-dory as it has been uh, in previous weeks of the season. So Jamal Williams and DeAndre Swift are just kind of, if you must, uh, running back options at this point. And a lot of the ancillary weapons outside of Amon Ross St. Brown would also be borderline starts in this one. In a deep enough league, I think you could take a shot on uh, DJ Chark. Other than that, I would not feel super confident uh, with anyone in that Lions offense outside of the obvious, uh, Jared Goff and Amon Ross St. Brown. Next game, we have the Denver Broncos at the Kansas City Chiefs. So the Chiefs obviously are home favorites at negative 12 and a half. That may be the biggest... Yes, that is the biggest, um, you know, favored uh, line of the week. And then with a 45 point over under. So the Chiefs, starting all your Chiefs, uh, just once again. So Patrick Mahomes, uh, Travis Kelsey, Jarek McKinnon, Isaiah Pacheco, I think you could even get in there. Um, and Juju Smith Schuster. Any of the wide receivers behind Juju, I would not feel super confident in starting. Um, but definitely the big five there with the running backs, Mahomes, Kelsey, and Juju can feel great about. Then on the Denver Broncos side of the ball, uh, Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, if he's active, uh, it's been a little bit questionable the last few weeks. So um, keep your eye on that. Um, Greg Dulcich, perhaps, too, if he is active, more of an if you must. Uh, I don't want to start any of the quarterbacks, and I don't want to start any of the running backs uh, against the Chiefs. But just some of those pass catchers in, you know, a come from behind um, game script is what I'm is, is what I'm imagining here. Just like what happened last week against the Rams, that was a little bit more shocking. But either way, in this one, I think it's a little bit more feasible against the Chiefs. So Denver pass catchers, but don't necessarily want the uh, quarterbacks or the uh, running backs. Moving on to Miami at New England. This one's another tricky one. Uh, obviously, with the Denver Broncos, they fired their head coach, so big changes there in that offense overall. In this one, Tua Tagovailoa has essentially been ruled out. Uh, Mike McDaniels has said that uh, Teddy Bridgewater is going to get the start here against the Patriots. Um, Patriots are at home at uh, negative three, so it's so a pretty standard line there with a 41 and a half point over under. So um, Teddy Bridgewater uh, doesn't necessarily limit the ceiling of the Tyree Kills or Jalen Waddles of the world. Um, so I still would feel fine starting both of them. I think Teddy Bridgewater would come in as a super flex play. And then um, as far as the running backs go, don't really feel great about starting either one, either Jeff Wilson 
or Raheem Mostert, if I could help it. Um, the Mike Kosicki, and that I love him uh, as an athlete and as a Penn State fan and everything else, but just cannot start him for for fantasy purposes at this point. Um, so that pretty much does it for for the Dolphins. On the Patriots side of the ball, I think Mac Jones once again will come in as a super flex play. Uh, you are definitely trusting Ramondre Stevenson if he's healthy. Uh, last week was just kind of a brutal game. Uh, I, I would I would basically consider that just like more of a fluke. Just happened at a horrible time for you. So if you still have him uh, on the championship team, congratulations. Uh, but he really uh, disappointed last week. Um, as far as the pass catchers go. Um, Jacoby Myers obviously had a great game. Uh, Kendrick Bourne obviously had a great game. Uh, Devontae Parker was out, so that kind of helped both of their um, their uh, performances there, as well as coming uh, quickly behind against the Bengals. I think the Bengals put up um, three touchdowns early and then didn't score again until like the fourth quarter or something. It, just, it was a pretty wild game, uh, but either way that definitely helped get the uh, pass grips up. So in this one, I think the Patriots are going to have to uh, keep up pace w- w- with the Dolphins offense. So I think the passing game could be, um, could be something to, to look at, but I would trust once again, the most uh, Jacoby Myers then would want to start Ramondre Stevenson and not really want to rely on any other piece in that offense, except for Mac Jones as a super flex play. Um, moving on to the Indianapolis Colts at the New York giants. The giants of course are home favorites at negative six with a 38 and a half over under so definitely appealing for the uh for the uh giants dst uh in general but especially because the colts were just so freaking brutal against the chargers on monday night football if they're going to be trotting out nick Foles again um yeah i don't know i think i think you can absolutely fire up the uh giants uh dst in this one uh basically any colts players i'm i'm generally speaking fading or you know sitting i suppose um which is really rough because i really love michael pittman jr as a talent but just it's going to be really hard to get him into your lineup with so much on the line here uh, in week 17 so he will be basically the only um startable like if you must option then as far as the running backs go Fine to have uh, Deion Jackson, fine to have Zach Moss, um, but just don't really want to be relying on them in your championship. So they would come in as busts in this one. Then any other piece of that offense, any of the quarterbacks, any of the tight ends, uh, can, cannot, will not start them against the Giants. Then we're going on to uh, the Carolina Panthers at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers are home favorites, just kind of standard line of negative three uh, with a 40 and a half point over under. So that on the Tampa Bay side of the ball, definitely would feel confident starting uh, Leonard Fournette and Rashad White. Still going to be starting Chris Godwin, still going to be starting Mike Evans. Um, Tom Brady would come in as a borderline QB one super flex play and don't really want to start any of the tight ends here. If I could help it, uh, Kate Otten is, is on the field a lot, uh, which is nice, but just has not been converting much unless he's getting a touchdown, but just kind of a minimal targets. Don't love it. So, um, then Julio Jones, uh, just fine to have on a roster, but don't want to be starting him unless I'm truly, truly desperate. On the Carolina on the Carolina Panthers side of the ball, they uh, are kind of interesting here. Um, DJ Moore, if he's healthy, um, definitely can trust him. More of a trust if you must uh, level uh, wide receiver against the Buccaneers. Sam Darnold himself will come in as a super flex option, and then uh, the running backs uh, Dante Foreman is a borderline trust. More of an if you must like a deeper league flex play, and then. Um, only because of Chuba Hubbard is kind of eating into his ceiling most weeks. Last week, he still showed out pretty well. But Hubbard, fine to have, but definitely don't want to be trusting him if I can help it. And that'll basically do it for the Panthers. Uh, moving on to the Cleveland Browns at the Washington Commanders. Commanders are favored at negative two with another 40 and a half point over under. Uh, Washington is uh, back to starting Carson Wentz, so that's kind of interesting. Um, 
and Antonio Gibson is questionable. So either way, you are absolutely trusting Brian Robinson and uh, Terry McLaurin for sure. Uh, Jahan Dotson, Curtis Samuel would come in as a deeper league flex plays. Then Logan Thomas is a very deep league uh, tight end play borderline uh, sit though in this one. Then on the Cleveland Brown side of the ball, um, obviously Nick Chubb, you're starting Amari Cooper, absolutely. And then uh, David Njoku uh, from, from the tight end perspective, I think you can start him as well. Um, Donovan Peoples-Jones is a real um, interesting one here. Um, don't feel super confident uh, in a championship situation. Uh, just because uh, Deshaun Watson has been a little bit disappointing in his time back uh, from his suspension. So uh, just, just that ceiling that I was kind of imagining just has not really been there. Um, so Donovan Peoples-Jones, depending on your uh, league and, and and your roster settings, he's, he's a potential start. Uh, but definitely more of, of an if you must. Some of that ceiling just has not been there, again, with uh, Deshaun Watson just not playing as well as we would have hoped for. So kind of a uh, basic one there. And then Kareem Hunt, you just cannot start at, at this point. Still fine to have on, on your roster, but he's borderline droppable in non-keeper leagues. So, um, yeah, just Nick Chubb, Mark Cooper, David and, and David and Joku, Sean Watson will be coming in as a as like a super flex play. Looking at now, um, Jacksonville Jaguars at the Houston Texans. Um, we got the Jaguars as road favorites at negative four and a half with a 43 and a half over under. And Jacksonville, you know, uh, I'd I'd still feel very confident starting uh, Trevor Lawrence, still feel very confident starting Travis Etienne as well as Evan Ingram. Now, uh, as far as the wide receivers are concerned, it's a little bit uh, up and down week in and week out. We're talking about Christian Kirk. We're talking about Zay Jones. Um, Marvin Jones really hasn't been as much of a uh, problem here to take away from uh, Christian Kirk or, or Zay Jones, but um, still getting very good volume. Um, and against the Texans, that really shouldn't change. So uh, on, the, on the Texans side of the ball, um, Really don't want to start anyone here if I can help it, except for Brandon Cooks if he's healthy. Um, that's pretty much it. It's not really much to say here. Just sit all, all your Texans except for a healthy Brandon Cooks. So that'll do it for the Sunday early slate. Going to be moving on now to the Sunday later slate. Um, weird look update. Um, haven't really gotten any. People are just kind of coming off of the elevators uh, very quickly. Not sure if you can hear any background noise, but uh, it has been interesting. Um, keeping an eye out for that, but so far so good. So we'll finish things off now with, with, with the Sunday uh, later slate with the San Francisco 49ers at the Las Vegas Raiders. San Francisco are favored uh, minus 10 on a 41 and a half line uh, once again going to just touch on the Raiders offense. Uh, Derek Carr will not be playing for the Raiders anymore this season. So we've got Jarrett Stidham at least for week 17. Definitely can lower expectations for everyone in this offense in general, but especially against the 49ers. So still, I would not hesitate to start Devontae Adams, unless I had solid options uh, to to replace him with, it still would be very tricky for me to, or difficult for me to not get him in my lineups, as well as Josh Jacobs. If he's healthy, if he's active, I'm going to be starting him, um, unless you have just rock solid options, like just two stud, like running backs, just like waiting in the wings, then, you know, it, it'd be hard to uh, shift off of him. Um, Darren Waller. Another one, kind of like Devontae Adams, uh, definitely a, a lowered ceiling, but still a very good player. Hard to not start him if you could help it. Um, and then Hunter Renfro actually had a very uh, positive outing uh, in week 16. However, um, still just not feeling great about anyone in this offense, uh, you know, just with, with the quarterback change. 
Then on the San Francisco side of the ball, just fire up all your 49ers. Uh, keep riding George Kittle. He's been one of the best players in the fantasy playoffs, uh, as well as Brock Purdy. He is definitely more than a super flex play. He's a pretty safe super flex play, but I think he's kind of a borderline uh, QB1 uh, in this one. Obviously, you're firing up Christian McCaffrey, Brandon Ayuk as well. Um Keep your eye on on Debo Samuel. He may be active in this one. I believe he is currently questionable, uh, but if he is active, I I would feel compelled to uh, start him as well. Next match, a, a, a very intriguing one of the week. I got the New York Jets at the Seattle Seahawks. Jets are favored on the road at negative uh, one and a half on a forty two and a half over under. Start with the Seattle Seahawks. So right now, two of the big stars are questionable. That would be Kenneth Walker and Tyler Lockett. So if both of them are active, I say start them. Uh, obviously, DK Metcalf is a is a is a trust either way. And then Geno Smith would come in as a super flex play at least against a tough New York Jets defense. On the New York Jets side of the ball, touched on this earlier, but Mike White will be making the start. Zach Wilson no longer starting this season outside of a Mike White injury. Um, so you can definitely trust Mike White uh, as a borderline QB1 super flex play. Uh, then as far as uh, the skill position players go, uh, I can absolutely trust Garrett Wilson. You can trust... Um, well, you can trust Garrett Wilson. Uh, some of the running backs have been kind of up and down. So Zonovan Knight was a big disappointment uh, last week. Well, as well as Garrett Wilson, if, if I'm being honest. Um, so I would not have a ton of confidence starting Zonovan Knight or Michael Carter, to be honest. Uh, Michael, Michael Carter a little bit more. He actually uh, caught a, a decent amount of passes, had a pretty nice uh, double-digit point uh, PPR outing uh, on most people's benches. But either way, he would come in as more of an if-you-must uh, deeper league flex play there. Um, Elijah Moore still not really wanting to start him. Uh, or any of the other pass catchers outside of Garrett Wilson, although they all get elevated a certain amount, like Tyler Conklin, uh, CJ Uzama, but not really wanting to start any of them outside of Garrett Wilson. Two more games left. We have the Minnesota Vikings at the Green Bay Packers with a very nice 48-point uh, over under projection, and the uh, Packers are going to be home favorites at at three and a half. So basically I'm starting all my Packers, all my Vikings. This could be a really exciting game. So I'm, to, I'm starting Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon, um, Christian Watson, of course, if he's healthy. Um, and then Romeo Dubes as well on the Viking side of the ball, definitely starting uh, Kirk cousins, Dalvin cook, Justin Jefferson, TJ Hawkinson for sure. Adam Thielen would come in as more of an if you must here, as well as KJ Osborne, although it could be very high scoring. Typically, I wouldn't really shy away from Adam Thielen, um, but just definitely more of, of an if you must here. Uh, but definitely, I'm very excited to start a lot of my Packers and a lot of my Vikings. Really excited for that game for fantasy purposes, but also for just general NFL purposes as well. I'm going to finish off the episode with the Los Angeles Rams at the Los Angeles Chargers. So sort of a home game there for the Rams, obviously still in the SoFi Stadium. Chargers are favorited uh, six and a half on a 41 point over under. Uh, so the Chargers on the Chargers side of the ball can definitely trust uh, Austin Eckler, um, Keaton Allen, Mike Williams. Gerald Everett was one of the more disappointing uh, players of uh, week 16. But as far as tight ends go, still uh, would want to fire him up, but he would come in more as an if you must in this one. Then Justin Herbert, of course, uh, has been a little bit disappointing over the last couple of weeks, but just with those weapons around him, um, I'd be hard pressed to not get him in your starting lineup. So I, I just would be rolling with him uh, no matter what. Um, as a trustworthy uh, quarterback option, then against the Rams, uh, looking at Baker Mayfield as a as a borderline super flex play, I'm not going to feel great about getting him in my starting lineup. <coughs> 
for a uh, fantasy championship lineup. But um, what is interesting is that Cam Akers is now uh, back into uh, the fold as a trust borderline, if you must, more of a flex play uh, running back option here against the Chargers. Um, and then Tyler Higby is a trustworthy tight end, uh, more just kind of speaking to the quality of the tight end uh, realm at this point, but absolutely in a position to to get volume or to get uh, target volume against the Chargers. And then uh, Van Jefferson would be more of a desperation wide receiver play. So definitely more of an if you must, a very deep league uh, play or definitely a stash um, as a as a defense measure. Uh, so kind of borderline, if you must, uh, bust here. So really mainly interested in Cam Akers and Tyler Higby. Everyone else is kind of borderline against the Chargers there. So so that's going to do it for the Week 17 slate. I um, just want to thank you once again for, for listening and checking out the show. If you found this to be useful, please hit like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it's not just me on the channel. It, it's a whole bunch of other great content creators from IDP, guys. Uh, so just don't want you to miss out on that. So uh, subscribe and click the bell so you never miss a new episode from myself or anyone else on the IDP Guys channel. So once again, I just want to wish you all the best of luck. Thank you for listening. And uh, we will be back next week. Um, some people are still playing in week 18 leagues, so we'll still kind of cover a lot of the matchups. Uh, even though it's not the best for fantasy, I will still be back uh, to kind of talk you through the week 18. And maybe we'll just go through some lessons that were learned over the course of this fantasy season. And I'll give you a little rundown of, of how some of my leagues went. Uh, played in 27 leagues. A couple were like kind of larger pool, like charity tournaments, like Scott Fishbowl, another one, Polly's uh, playoff, which I did make it to the final round, and like the Warrior Bowl, things like this. Uh, but in my typical head to head uh, lineup setting leagues, um, out of the 27, so if we take away the charity tournaments, we'll call that uh, 24 leagues, 11 of those I made the semifinals in so a lot made the playoffs <laughs> 11 went to the semifinals now i have six championships at stake here uh in week 17 so i will give you an update on all that uh next time but until then best of luck hopefully we can win you some championships and uh keep climbing <laughs>